Yeah, it's a whole different world when you get up there above that tree line. That's uh, looking at Cherokee County earlier this afternoon. And interestingly, that's on the edge of alligator country. As you go southeast, you get more into that swampland and figure maybe the music kind of fits the theme there. And some new patrons over the weekend. I want to thank Grant Leite and James Flanagan. And James there with an extra generous donation. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. All right, let's look at the surface chart here. We've got a lot of weather in the western U.S. Big, powerful system coming out of Nevada there. And Austin, not Texas, but Austin, Nevada, has seen 30s all afternoon with thunder snow. And you can see that's back there well behind the cold front and a good indication of a cold core low. Very cool conditions there in the Great Basin area, and that cold front is moving on out into Arizona. Out across Texas and Oklahoma, we've got a stationary front in place, extending from a weak frontal system in Georgia. The dry line is not very well developed, but it's roughly from the Cap Rock across the big country of Texas and down to the hill country. And we can see dew points in the 70s coming up into the DFW area and then circling back to the east. Well, I should say easterly winds coming up the Red River Valley there. If we add a little bit more moisture and instability, that could be a good pattern there for rotating storms. And of course, the cold air factory added again. Big 10, 30 millibar high centered over Quebec, driving 60s and 70s and even a few 50s into the Midwest and Great Lakes area. 56 this afternoon at Chicago with rain coming down and 62 there at Detroit. And here's a look at how things unfolded starting out with yesterday. You can see that the upper level low is somewhere in this area here. We had the front crossing the mountains there between Bakersfield and Mojave and the surface low somewhere in this area right there. So moving forward you can see that jet stream energy really amped up across Nevada. A little anafront set up there in western Nevada and the surface front was already entering the deserts. This is uh, around midnight last night. So that's kind of the setup there. Lots of cold air advection coming into the California San Joaquin Valley, and then, of course, a lot of wraparound cold conveyor belt working there into western Nevada. And moving forward, you can see that setup there, lots of shower activity, lots of dynamic lift from Tonopah and Coaldale up to Fallon and Austin. And then as we got later in the day, we started getting more of the influence of the upper level low itself, giving us the cold core convection. So let's break it down again, as that Tears for Fear song goes. I want to introduce a new site that we're going to start using. This is Tropical Tidbits. It's at tropicaltidbits.com. I want to thank Dwayne, one of our viewers, for passing on this site. It's run by Levi Cowan, and I talked to him about using the graphics, and he was all for it. In fact, Levi was one of the original readers of my weather forecasting handbook way back in the day. Levi now is a PhD student at Florida State University studying tropical meteorology and this site is fantastic and hopefully I'll be able to show you more here in the weeks ahead. By fantastic, well, you've got some really great options here on your model output. Options here, frontogenesis, a lot of uh, dynamical diagnostic tools. And these are things you don't really see every day. And also cross sections. And you can see a couple different options there including normal and in plain wind. That's more for technical viewers. But, but you can see that's some pretty awesome stuff. So let's look at that 500 millibar chart. So this is a good way of unlocking what's happening in the atmosphere. This is in the mid-troposphere. We're looking at 500 millibar patterns up at about 18,000 feet, roughly. 
and this shows us the jet stream flow. We can see the polar front jet kind of split. See that western system? We can already see the cutoff flow there in Nevada and a separate cutoff flow around the Paducah area. So the main polar front jet stream way up north in the Northwest Territories in Hudson Bay. So we're kind of getting to an end of this pattern of uh, cold air outbreaks, even though there is some residual air up there. And we're kind of dominated by these cutoff systems right now. And in between, a big ridge, which is keeping things shut down on the Great Plains. So narrowing down those jet stream patterns, you can either, well, you can look at the uh, barbs, but an easier way is to place the axes in this gutter here between high positive vorticity on the left side and weak or negative vorticity on the other side. So we put it kind of right in the middle, right on that fence there. And that gives us the jet stream position, and we can see that that's focused over Southern California and the Colorado River Basin. I need to work on my pronunciation there. And there's a separate jet, kind of, you know, you can pick that out the same way, like that in the Southern U.S. And this also gives us the frontal positions. Now I like to go by the smaller scale waves, like instead of using that big ridge, I like to use that small ridge right there. And then I'll try to find a small trough where there's the strongest curvature. Yeah, and that's kind of a tough one. I guess I'd have to put it down here. So I'm going to find that frontal system kind of in between along the jet. So I should find the surface low right there. And then the cold front extending south and towards the trough and the warm front towards the ridge. And in this case, it's actually a little further north. So that kind of agrees with what we have on the surface analysis. Similar situation out here. The problem is the vorticity pattern is very concentric. So this is, so I would probably just, you know, go down to the surface pattern and chalk this up as a vertically stacked barotropic system. And speaking of barotropic system, that's probably the outgoing tropical storm Martha. We know that from yesterday that's heading towards Bermuda. And we did cover that yesterday on the supporter only stream. We also went into great detail on cross sections with a specific storm. So if you're a supporter and you missed yesterday's video, head back and check your notifications. All right, let's take a quick peek what's going to happen over the next few days. We'll run this forward. Yeah, I like this animator. It's nice and smooth. We carry the jet stream out into the central Rockies. Looks like a jet max right there over western Colorado. So probably a little bit of rough weather in Colorado and Wyoming over the next 24 hours. Looks like the cutoff low in Tennessee has kind of drifted southeast. Yeah, and let's go forward through the rest of the week. Well, the weekend's going to be here again pretty soon. Cutoff low there in the Ohio, Ohio River Valley. Looks like that kind of just kind of arced around. And then the trough in the central U.S. lifted up north, carrying the dynamics up into Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Looks like another cutoff low way out there between California and Hawaii. And let's just take a look way up into the future going into next week. I remember next... For next week, we were looking at a low developing out in Texas, a big upper-level low. Let's see if it's still going for that. Got to get this all the way up to Sunday. You can see the, the prevailing westerlies are starting up again in Texas and Kansas, so we should see a slow increase in thunderstorms along the dry line and up into the high plains, and we're already seeing that probably ahead of this trough. So that's going to be a good pattern there for the high plains for Sunday. And let's take a look at Monday. Yeah, some troughiness right there over Texas. This map is a little, little bit too zoomed out to pick that out. But I can kind of see a little open circulation maybe, kind of in that area. And let's just kind of for go forward there. Yeah, there's a, there's a good upper level low right there. So it's going to be unsettled in Texas and Oklahoma next week, and I would expect probably some rain. Elsewhere, Big Ridge, in fact, 588 high, so it's going to be hot in the Midwest around the same time next week. 
See, look, look how much information we're getting off of this upper level chart. You know, this is a, this is fantastic. We almost don't even have to look at the surface charts. In fact, I probably wouldn't just to save time unless I see something interesting. But anyway, another jet coming down through Montana. So it looks like storm action for the Northern Plains late next week. A lot of uh, ridging across the northeast U.S. That's going to put an end to all that cold weather up there. And this troughiness in the central U.S. should persist and keep the rain chances up slightly. Okay, so we're talking about Thursday next week. And yeah, let's keep that going forward. And I think we've hit the end of the run. So we're only at 246 hours so far. I'm always interested in that European model and... I found that it is superior with these boundaries and the severe weather we've had. Now it looks like they're using the lower resolution fields here and let's see what kind of yeah a very limited set this is kind of what they have for their public data so that that's why we go to pivotal weather and we use their stuff for the European model. And you can see with pivotal weather there, you've got kind of uh, kind of an expanded set of fields there that you normally don't see. And to to track that little system there in Texas, we need to be looking the system next week. We need to be looking in the mid levels. So I'm going to go to the 700 millibar chart. Yeah, so you can see that ridge starts breaking down around Thursday. Then we go into the weekend, westerly flow opens up, and then the trough rears its head around Sunday or Monday. And that's, I think uh, some of that is coming from maybe some latent heat release. Yeah, I think a little convective cluster is maybe getting that trough going. I can see that around the Houston area starting on Monday, and then it looks like it moves into Texas around Wednesday. So this is coming more into line with the GFS. I think the European model may be having problems. But for the short term, yeah, look at that. That's the European model. It's only every six hours, but um, I, I was going to mention that it did a fantastic job last week with the boundary positions and even with convective initiation. So I'm really warming up to this. I think it may be handling some of the systems better than the American models. So let's take a quick look at what it's forecasting. Easterly flow starting to build into Texas and looks like we get some storms going with that for Wednesday. Then some convective clusters in Oklahoma for Thursday. And then we start seeing an in increase in precip there across Texas for Saturday. Yeah, it's a lot of convection, and that's probably what starts feeding the upper levels with warm air. And probably resulting in our upper level troughing there. And there you see it bringing in easterly flow into the Red River Valley around midweek next week. So there's still a lot of uncertainty with this pattern, but it's looking like that probably will happen. And we are looking for a big change there in Europe towards the weekend. And this is it. That could be the remains of Arthur. I still haven't looked at that, but uh, yeah, the fronts are going to be looking like that early on Friday. And then things come through the UK into France and Belgium. It looks like a pretty good round of showers. It looks like the it looks like it's bringing that inland now at the time of peak heating. At least the GFS is. So possibly a little bit of interesting convection there on Friday, but I remember when I was looking at this yesterday yesterday Saturday looked overly cloudy and dominated by mid-level dynamics. And the best stuff looked to be on Thursday. Let's see if we can bring up a skew T. Now 
There's France there, a little skinny cape. Not much convective inhibition, so I'd probably expect numerous cells to be going up. And uh, yeah, there's enough shear to organize things. You can see that the basic bulk shear is 73 knots. But yeah, right movers, uh, looks like maybe a northwesterly flow situation. Storms moving towards the southeast and maybe a little bit of curvature in there to help sweep out a little bit of SRH there on the diagrams. So I would expect maybe a few isolated severe storms out of something like this. But due to the iffy capping, I would expect them to start rapidly aggregating into clusters and lines of multi-cells. And then very interesting weather change for Saturday is that cold front sweeps through Germany. It should be kind of gusty and unsettled. And then I'd be looking maybe for some orographic storms going up there in the Alps. Looks pretty unsettled there. And then the high pressure moves in and then we get to the end of the run. All right, so that's a look at things and hopefully you all enjoyed that. I better get this edited and uploaded, so let me go ahead and do that. So y'all take care, have a good evening, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.